19. Uh, we know, of course, that the book of Matthew is one of the uh, ways in which uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ was captured, uh, you know, uh, particularly with the audience of uh, the Jewish population in mind. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, his coming, his message was often, uh, you know, very much contested by many, many folks. He was certainly uh, proclaiming to be the Messiah, and the Jews were praying and waiting for a Messiah. And so uh, as Matthew, uh, who uh, captured his own eyewitness accounts of Jesus' ministry, wrote down what he saw, what he heard, what he experienced, Matthew was also, as a good uh, a Jew, able to pull from uh, his own heritage and reminding the listeners and the readers of his gospel about the ways in which Jesus fulfilled the prophecies that were often uh, put out there as a kind of get yourself ready. This is how you know that Jesus is the Messiah because he is fulfilling the words of Scripture. And so Matthew had in his heart and in his mind a very big priority of proving the Messiahship of Jesus to the Jewish audience so they themselves would be able to understand that that great prize, that great uh, 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 fulfillment of God's word was actually coming to pass in their lifetime. And I don't know about you, I'm so glad when God puts people around us that can remind us that even when it seems bleak, that God is going to fulfill God's word. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So Matthew chapter number one, verse 18, uh, we'll read down to the 23rd verse. Uh, this is the lectionary passage, and it says, Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph. But before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, plan to dismiss her quietly. All right. I'll, I'll try to unpack that a little bit. Uh, but just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Verse 23, look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So uh, we're going to talk for the next few minutes or so just from the topic, God is with you. God is with you. Father, bless the word that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And please send the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them God is with you. God is with you. Now pat yourself on the chest and say God is with me. Now, um, again, one, one of the great blessings uh, that we have uh, that I hope we do not lose even in this moment of crisis. Some of us are having a crisis of faith or at least a crisis of confidence uh, because uh, the world seems like overnight it has turned upside down. Now, you know, let's bracket the political stuff for a second, and let's just talk about your life. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> uh, because how many know some of this political stuff can be a great distraction to your life? Uh, that, that for many of us, uh, there are always opportunities for us to get swept up in the upside down nature of our lives. Uh, I am always one who is very aware of how life does not stop for anyone. Meaning that 
I can be having a great life and the person right next to me could be having a terrible time. And unless I am in deep connection with them, my great life and their terrible life will often not even be in uh, uh, intersection with one another. And that is why we can be coming to church or you can be on your job. Or you can be in your same house and, and you could be uh, on cloud nine. And the person next to you could be trying to figure out how are they going to make it. Some folk can be feeling like the world and the sky is falling down. And at the same time, someone in close proximity to them could be feeling like God has just answered every one of their prayers. Part of why I think it's important to lead with this declaration that God is with us and, and more specifically, God is with you is because whenever you find yourself on the cloud nine or in the pit, you need to be reminding yourself of God's presence and not just yourself, but the person next to you who may not be wherever you are. Hello, somebody. I mean, could it be that one of the great roles of the church in this moment of we followers of Jesus is to be the concrete expression of what it means to have God with us? This idea, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, uh, where many of us can often feel like God being with us must mean that God will literally micromanage and fix every one of our problems. And so if our problems remain unsolved, how many of you keep it real can be like, God, where are you? <laughs> Amen. I mean, I done fasted and prayed. I paid my tithes like the preacher told me. I, I, forgave, I forgave them most of the time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't cuss them out this week. I, 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 didn't, I didn't slit no, to touch your neighbor somebody, amen. I, I did all that I knew to do. And yet things still seem to be going the opposite direction. But could it not be that as Jurgen Moltmann argues, a wonderful German theolo theologian uh, uh, who comes out of the lineage of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who knew a little bit about what it meant to live in an environment of great repression during the Hitler years of Germany. Amen. He understood what it meant to be a follower of Jesus in an environment where the state and everything around you seem to be turning upside down right before your eyes. He argues that Rather than believing that God being with us or that God being in control or that God being all powerful is about God micromanaging all the, 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 the bad things that are happening in our lives. It is about the power of God to be able to hold the whole. Whew, my goodness. That, 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 that God is, is, is with us by demonstrating that God can hold everything. Together, even when we are a part of the problem or the solution. I wish I could talk to somebody today. Because quiet as it's kept, not all of us are part of the solution. I don't mean no harm. Amen. That, that, that helps me make sense to some of these folk that I want to believe don't follow the Jesus I follow. Hello, somebody. Who seem to always be choosing the kind of things that overdetermine our lives negatively, but yet they can say they're following Jesus. How I many know I don't want to be in a lot of shared spaces with them folk? That works when it's the stuff I'm radically concerned about. But how many of you know there's some times in your life where you are not a part of the solution? I wish I could talk to an honest church in here today. I don't mean no harm. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God is with me. God is with me. God is with you even when we fail to be faithful. And you see, part of why the Christmas story, the Advent is so important is because it constantly reminds you and I that God is not threatened or repelled by our lack of faithfulness. 
that God has a plan that God will push through your faithful, your unfaithfulness. Hello, somebody. God will push through your no and say yes. <laughs> Do I have somebody that can look back on your life? And you kept telling God no. And God said yes. He said no. And God said yes. You said no. And God said yes. He said, okay, God, yes. Yes, Lord. That's how that song, Yes, Lord, became so popular. Somebody holler, Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, I'll go all the way. Yes, Lord. Folk don't just holler, Yes, Lord, on the first time. I wish I could talk to some honest folk today. You know you just as hard-headed as everybody else. Sometimes God has to turn your no into a yes, and the way sometimes that happens, God has to make a believer out of us. So let's take a look at the story and see how God made a believer out of Joseph. I feel like I, I, I may get through this message all right. Mm -hmm. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him God is with us today. God is with us today. The first thing that we see in this story is that the Holy Spirit figured out a way to break through all of the no's of this physical limiting universe. Because how many of you know, according to the way uh, biology works, Mary was not supposed to be having a child. But our, one of the mysteries of the gospels, our doctrine, our theological assumption, the incarnation, if you will, teaches us that God impregnated Mary with the Messiah. God said yes. Nature was trying to say no. But God was saying when I am present, even those things that nature says are impossible. God says I can do whatever I will to do. Don't you know in our Pentecostal tradition, and y'all don't know that y'all Pentecostal, but tell your neighbor I'm Pentecostal, amen. <laughs> we believe that the Holy Spirit can move in ways that defy what people say is possible. All across the world, the Holy Spirit, the power of God in the world is moving and doing the miraculous, uniting folks across, across a, a, a gender and race and nationality. People are able to speak in languages they never heard of. Uh, uh, I, I remember the old school Pentecostal saints, they used to have testimonies where folk uh, didn't know how to play the piano, but they got filled with the Holy Spirit. And they get on over there and start sounding like Mozart. Stevie Wonder up in here. Amen. Y'all better pray for that anointing. Amen. We need a few more musicians up in this house. Touch your neighbor. Amen. Folk didn't have health care back in the day, but the saints would bring the oil and they would anoint the sick and the sick would recover. Folk didn't have enough ends to meet their, their needs and, and the spirit would move on the people and folks would bring everything they had moved by the spirit of God. And make sure that no one lived without their needs being met. How many of you know that's the kind of move of the Holy Spirit that we need in this moment? A move of the Holy Spirit that will move us to be radically embracing the other. And making sure that if they have need and I have the ability to solve it, then I am going to take advantage of God being with us and fulfilling that need. In the biblical text, God impregnating Mary through the Holy Spirit is called the incarnation. And many of us need to appreciate that one of the first signs that you and I know God is with us is how can we inhabit the ordinariness of life and do something extraordinary. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him, you can do something extraordinary. You can do something extraordinary. God being with us 
helps you and I to appreciate that even though I may not have enough of what I think I need, God knows how to make up the difference. God knows how to use whatever little I have and make up the difference. And how many know making up the difference is nothing that, that but, but God just giving you and I a nice little wink to remind us that I have all the power in my hands. Some of us, we trying to figure out how, how this thing is going to work out. And God is saying, I'm not asking you to get the solution. I'm asking you just to be faithful. Show up when I tell you to show up. Speak when I tell you to speak. Do what I tell you to do and watch God inhabit the ordinariness of your obedience and remind you that God is with you. Somebody shout hallelujah. The second thing we see, if you're going to be able to declare that God is with you, is that you got to be willing to stand with the vulnerable. And when this story, Mary was a vulnerable young teenager who was supposed to be marrying Joseph. And Joseph, by his recollection, hadn't consummated his marriage with Mary. Now, notwithstanding all the cultural uh, evil of the vulnerability of women at this time, Joseph had a choice to succumb to his patriarchy, toxic masculinity, you know, all that stuff we've been talking about the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. How many know that wasn't just a series, a one-off series, amen? <laughs> Joseph had a choice. Joseph could have said, now, I don't know about this one here. I'm going to use my privilege to put her away quietly now let's let's think about this for a second in the text it described joseph as a righteous person and yet he had still made up in his mind that he was getting ready to put her away What is it about, now sometimes you got to just kind of just rub up against the text a little bit. They teach us this in seminary. What is it about how we could describe ourselves as righteous? Lord, help me today. And still cause harm to other people. Think about all the ways you and I can pull out our resume. Well, I don't do this. I don't do that. This ain't my struggle. So I am righteous. Not realizing that on the other side of your resume. Because <laughs> how many know God keeps the other side as well? <laughs> You giving God your resume, God said, okay, let me, let me, let me edit this a little bit. Because I, I, my eyes are everywhere. See, I, I know what's going on in your heart. I know what's going on. In, I know the plans you have in your mind that don't nobody else know about. Because the scripture said that Joseph resolved in his heart what he was getting ready to do. Joseph, his first decision was not to stand next to this Young woman who he committed himself to marry. Now, I'm not going to act so holier than thou. Because I'd have had a few questions, too. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. If we supposed to be getting married, and all of a sudden she say, Hey, honey, I'm pregnant. And we ain't, we ain't, uh. Did, did nothing to get pregnant yet. I don't know if I'd have been one of these noble fellas. Just keeping it real. And I would feel like I was righteous. But how many of you know that God has a different standard? 
of what it means to be faithful. See, some of us can create a list of things that qualify us, and God will say, throw out your list. How can you make daily decisions to be faithful to what I've called you to do? And your faithfulness, as it was with Abraham, as it was with Moses, as it was with Deborah and Esther and Ruth, your faithfulness is counted to you as righteousness. God is calling us to stand with some vulnerable folk. And you may have all kinds of reasons why you feel like you shouldn't. Well, the Constitution says... The, 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 the code says, my doctrine says, and God is saying, stand with them. How do you know if you should stand with somebody? I'll give you a few, few things. If they're getting ready to be hurt physically, you should stand with them. I don't agree with what they're doing, and God don't agree with what you're doing either. Hello, somebody. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell them, God don't agree with you, everything you do now. I know you righteous. I know you holy. I know you. But can you imagine if God determined how he was going to stand with you based off of your righteousness? I mean, even if you you know, we're righteous 50% of the time. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's still a lot of open, a lot left open, a lot of chance for God to only have your back 50% of the time. How many know if God didn't have your back 100% of the time, you'd be told up? The scripture said, if God was not on my side, I'd be jacked up. That's the old BCM version. Right? 100% of the time. Even when I'm wrong, even when I'm failing, even when I'm doing the, the, the unfaithful thing, God, I still pray, be on my side. Stand next to me. Cover me when I'm uncovered. And if God can do that for you, why can't we do that for one another? Why can't we stand? So because Joseph had resolved in his heart what he was getting ready to do, Joseph wasn't getting his mind changed because he just had an intellectual exercise. How many know God had to send an angel to change Joseph's mind? Ooh, I know some of y'all all who don't believe in God and don't believe in the spirit and nothing like that. The last thing you want to see is an angel <laughs> popping up in your space, <laughs> making a believer out of you. Hey Amen. I know some of us in here, we think, you know, we, 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 we just too smart for everything. And Joseph thought he was righteous, doing the right thing. And God had to do a supernatural intervention. To change Joseph's mind. I'm here to tell you God wants to do a supernatural intervention in some of us. And change our mind. So we can make sure we're doing the will of God in this moment. We get so caught in what we think we ought to be doing. And we can be so convinced of the road that we're traveling. And sometimes God has to break into our mind and into our reality and say, pump your brakes, bruh. I got a different plan for you. I got a different assignment for you. Don't you run headlong in that direction when I called you to go the opposite way. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, God is trying to break into somebody's life today yeah, and remind you that this is not the direction I want you to go. Yeah. But I'm calling for you to stand in the gap. I'm calling for you to go the road that may be filled with a little bit of struggle. Go the way that may cause you a little bit of pain. But if you go with God and God goes with you, how many of you know no weapon that's formed against 
that's formed against you shall prosper. But victory shall be yours if you just hold on for a little while. Lord, help me to preach today. Somebody shout hallelujah. And then the last thing uh, the angel said to Joseph, uh, he told him, Emmanuel, uh, said that God is with you. Uh, Oh, Jesus. Is it back? Is it back? Uh, um, Give your neighbor a high five and tell him God is with us. Uh, He is trying to tell Joseph uh, that if you can just hold on uh, and believe that what I say uh, trumps what everybody else has to say. uh, And if you can believe that God is with you, uh, then even when the trial comes your way, uh, you can straighten up your back and say, God is with me if you can believe that the devil has no power that can trump the power of God then you can stand in the face of adversity and say God is with me if you can believe that what the doctor says does not trump what God the healer of your the healer of your body says uh, then even in the doctor's office uh, you can stand up and say God is uh, with me Uh, if you can believe uh, that all the injustice in the world uh, cannot defeat the God of justice uh, cannot defeat the God of righteousness uh, cannot defeat the God of power uh, then you can stand in the face uh, of all your adversity and you can be convinced like Joseph and make a U-turn and say I may have been going in that direction but I believe that I heard a word from God and what I heard from God has made a believer out of me so I believe today that God is with me yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because God is with me thy rod and thy staff they cover me you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies my cup runs over though I may be overwhelmed by fear I will not throw in the towel because God he's with me he has my back he's on my side and I shall I will I must overcome shout hallelujah Do I have anybody that's willing to stand on your feet today and say, God is with me. God is on my side. I will be an overcomer. I will be a victor. I will be a conqueror on my job, in my neighborhood, at my school, in my family. I shall be the proclaimer of this truth that God he's with me he has my back he will support me he will hold me up shout yeah hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. God wants to make a believer out of some of us in here. Some of us, I believe, is not the most evil people in the world. 
that God is often having to convert to believe that God is able. It's all us middle of the road folk, all us Josephs in the story, all of us who would describe ourselves as pretty good people. Going along with the status quo. The status quo told Joseph, get rid of Mary. And Joseph would be deemed as righteous by everybody around him by maintaining the status quo. The way he was shaped to be a man, to be a husband, to be a, a citizen in the Roman Empire, to be a faithful Jew. But how many know sometimes maintaining the status quo is not what we're called to do? Sometimes God will speak to us and say, the greatest demonstration of my presence with you is you being able to resist the imposition of evil, of unrighteousness, of the hell that's happening in your family, in your relationship. And if you and I can trust and believe that God, you're with me, and if I I mean, God, I, now I need you to send me an angel just to shake me out of my status quo slumber. If that's what you need, you better ask God, send me every sign I need. Sometimes I'd rather be pushed into the will of God by God than sleepwalk into the status quo that will still bring death, bondage, and the opposite of God's will in my life.